Hey. Good morning, Don. Good morning. Happy Monday. Yeah, happy Monday to you. I know. We're just a couple of weeks away from the big Christmas holiday. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Oh my gosh. This is the last week of school before the holiday break. I know. It's crazy. It's crazy and exciting at the same time. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah. You know, one of the things that people are going to notice, I think, is when everybody starts to come back home again for the holidays, how things can be um, a little bit chaotic and they'll be wishing for other things, right? They'll be wishing for uh, holidays to be a certain way and that people are friendly and happy and they'll be wishing for things to be a certain way at work. And a lot of times this is when people think about leaving their company, yeah. right? Yep. Because they're, they're surrounded by a couple different things. They're surrounded by the family and they're like, oh my gosh, I want more of this. And they're seeing all the ways they can't have that. Maybe it's <laughs> other areas where they're hoping to have some port, sort of freedom, whatever that looks like. Right. Right. So it's an opportunity for them to get clarity because they often take time off to be with their family. <coughs> right. Sorry. I'm, I have a little bit of a tickle. That's okay. So it's a, and you know what? And mm. as we go into this, you know, winter, <laughs> hibernation, whatever it is, we often ask ourselves lots of questions before we go into hibernation. We do. We do. And a lot of the questions that we ask, you know, the, the questions are often related to a symptom. They're related to yes. the, how things are feeling in the moment right? If you're feeling a little bit stressed because everybody's coming home or you're feeling like you're behind the eight ball or like for a lot of us, as you're coming up on the end of the quarter, <coughs> sorry, <laughs> as you're coming up on the end of the quarter, you're running into like year end deadlines. Yeah. A lot of things have to be done when you're ready to be at home with your people. And so you start to get upset because maybe you didn't plan well enough earlier, or this is the nature of the beast. Oh my gosh, Liz, you're going to have to talk for just a minute. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. You go on mute. I'll go ahead and talk. Um, get that, whatever it is out. So, you know, a lot of times here we are wondering what it is. Um, for a second, I almost thought, forgot what we were talking about because I was so worried about you, Dawn. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> No big I'm deal. Back. I know I what I'm it's back. like. Okay, go ahead and start. It's and the symptom. Says, it's like, why is she coughing, right? She's right. coughing. So coughing is just coughing. Right. But what, what's causing the cough? Is it, did I eat something funny? Is it an allergy? Do I have pneumonia? Right? Mm -hmm. It's the, it, there's, the cough is the extension. It's a symptom. Mm -hmm. It's the symptom of something else that's going on. Otherwise, people don't walk around coughing. Well, little kids do. We were with we were with my sister's niece, this niece's sister's niece's baby. I, so I some sort of niece twice removed or something for me. Anyway, she's two and she was coughing. So her mom was trying to teach her to cough into her elbow. Mm -hmm. She was going. She was going. <laughs> she couldn't get her elbow up high enough. Oh my but, god, that is so adorable. <laughs> but, in, but that's a case where she was. She was, the symptom was the coughing. What was mm -hmm. causing the coughing was trying to please people, mm. right? Trying to be the show off, be the center of attention. So there, there are these symptoms that we were dealing with all the time, right? And the symptom is I'm tired yeah. or I'm overwhelmed or I'm super excited or I feel fat and bloated or and who knows what it is, but those are all symptoms of something. And I have the same thing going on in like my body. So for example, you know, I have um, knee pain in my left knee, but that is often a symptom mm. of some alignment issues in my hip. Right. 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 So, but often you'll but the start to symptom, treat the knee. The knee treat. triggers it to get me to go, oh, what's going on? And really investigate. Right. But you quite often people will investigate the knee. They're not looking at what's causing the whole thing to happen. And, you know, we find that when women, well, anybody, but when pe people are getting ready to like leave a job or they want to make a big pivot, um, quite often they're leaving because of a symptom. Yep. Not the root cause. You know, so if you're, if you are, if, if you tend to be 
highly organized and need to be able to make a lot of forward progress and, and be productive and you're you're feeling trapped at home like you know it's complete chaos you may take it out on the people at work and then you think it's work's fault that mm-hmm. you can't be productive when really the problem is at home but you don't recognize it as being at home so today we want to talk about uh, Liz has this really great tool she's going to share with us about the wheel of life because we there there are two sayings that Liz and I use a lot one is how you do anything is how you do everything. And we really stole that from Harv Ecker. But really, if you have to be productive and organized, you, you're going to be that way everywhere in your life or most areas. Or if you need to be happy and carefree and be acknowledged by the world, you have to, you'll be doing that everywhere in your life. There's, so that's one thing that we say. But we also know that um, uh, everywhere you go, there you are. So if you leave, if you leave someplace because you're unhappy with how everybody's doing things, chances are that same situation is going to follow you into the next environment. So it's important to make sure that when you're making a choice to leave or to stay, you've gotten to the root cause because you need to make the decision based on the root cause. You know, you wouldn't go to a podiatrist if you had a cough, right? You'd go to somebody who understands cough right? And long things. But we do, we do that all the time, right? Mm-hmm. You know, we, we leave companies because we don't like the way those people are when, but, it's, but if you look, maybe every job you had, you had the same complaint. All right. So why don't we get to work on the complaint so that you can either stay at the job or leave with a newfound power? Anyway, I'm going off on this for a little while. What else do you, you know what? Like, I think that's really important. Like when there is a complaint, that's when it's time to, okay, okay, pause. My husband and I typically wear rubber bands on our wrist. And every now and then um, I didn't put mine back on after a shower, but, and then if we have a thought that's compulsive, we just kind of like, we don't do it hard, but we just pull it and go out because it's not really about the complaint, right? The complaint is really a symptom. And then you got to hover in and go, okay, what are the facts here? And what's really being said Mm -hmm. And, and doing that investigative work to figure out what, what is the contrast being shown? Where is the opportunity of what, um, what I need to make changes of in my life, or you know, what's not working? Right. So not, right. So contrast is typically mean that something in your life is just not working. Hmm. Hmm. And you can and you have two options: you you, you grow, or, or you shrink. complain and stay the same. Right. <laughs> Right. But I mean, you know, in the, in the laws of thermodynamics, right. Mm-hmm. Energy is always moving. So you're either growing or you're expanding shrinking. or you're shrinking. So if, when you're in a complaint mode, you can either work through it and be, get to the other side, or you can shrink and become smaller. Right. Which isn't always the way most humans want to go. So and we don't always let... realize it when we, when we're in it. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and okay. if you're in a, there you go. Now you can share your screen. Okay. So here is an example of the wheel of life. And if you just sit there and think about the wheel of life, there's all these different things that we have to balance in our life. We have our career, we have our money, we have our health, our family and friends, our partner and our spouse. So you got the relationship things down at the bottom there. You got personal growth, spirituality, fun, leisure, recreation. And you know what? many years I put that on hold I should probably make that piece of the pie for me a little bit bigger because you know I have some some making up to do in the fun leisure and recreation and then we got the physical environment your home your garden and your surroundings so if we sit here and think about you know these are you know eight different areas of your life that you have to to balance at all times and it's really hard to actually Don and I also have a saying about balance Nothing is ever 100% completely in balance at all times. So it's good to take an assessment and find out where you are. Um, so if we were looking at this, and, and we do this fairly often, um, and sometimes we forget, but it's good to find out, like, what is working in my life? If I was, I was able to grade this and zero being on the inside and fulfilled being on the outside, what are the different areas in my life that are really working right now? Is it career? Is it money? Is it health? Is it my relationships with my friends and my family or my spouse and my partner? 
Um, so what would that look like? And you can kind of see an example down here on the bottom right of what it could look like. You have things that are closer to the zero, things that look um, feel like they're being much more fulfilled, right? If zero was on the inside and 10 was on the outside. So the nice thing is, is that gives you kind of like a starting point of where it is you, excuse me, here we go. Try not to make anybody dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> where you feel fulfilled. And then once you have an ideas like this, you know, you start to ask yourself the questions in the areas that you have a lower score, you know, what does that look like? Look for the facts, mm -hmm. you know, and we do this fairly often, you know, Don and I, we have a saying to each other when something's going on, we just stop and say, okay, what's the facts? Let's kind of shimmy into the situation a little bit and figure out what's going on. So we can figure out the contrast and that's an opportunity to say something's not working here. What do I want it to look like? Mm -hmm. So Don, what are some of the questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, so when you, if, if you can uh, go down to the example a little bit again. Yeah. So for example, you see the, there's one at the top left, which I think is the physical environment. And that, that in that example, it, it scored a two. Now, a two might mean that you, it could mean you wish you were putting more attention on it because there's a lot of things you want to get done. Or it could be, I'm just unhappy there. I don't, I, I don't like my house. I don't like my chair. I don't like something. So it could be a, it could be a whole range of things, but it gives you the chance to start to dig deeper into what is the issue that's going on there. Right. It could be, you know, my daughter and I went round and round for a while around the house. Uh, she works for one of those uh, retail stores that has lots of soaps and shampoos and plugins into the wall. And, you know, we could easily have 85 different smells in the house and all the smells are beautiful. But what we found out was they were giving me a headache. Mm. So so it wasn't the smell so much because it smelled beautiful but it was but there was a headache right so the symptom was i have a headache and then when i when i started to look at the facts it was because we have all these different smells going on in the house but the real issue was i didn't want to hurt her feelings yeah hmm. so how do i not hurt her feelings to get what i need and to allow her what she needs which was she likes the smelly stuff. So it required a different kind of conversation. But then I started to notice where in other areas of my life am I afraid of hurting someone's feelings so I don't say something. So like this, so in one case, the symptom was the headache. In that case, the symptom was a headache. But the, the root cause really was I, I don't want to hurt someone's feelings. And I can look in all of those areas to see where. I might not have scored something a 10 because there's somebody in that category where I don't want to hurt their feelings. So it's, an, it's a way to kind of ex, mm. to explore how to use the tool to get to the root cause of something. But I might have jumped ahead on that, Liz, but I, I just wanted people no, to know. I think this is good. This is great. And this is how the conversations go, right? Right. Is, you know, why the number, why did you give it a two? Mm -hmm. What's the symptom? And then figure out, okay, what's causing the symptom, right? Right. And just because you're not working on something doesn't mean you should give it a two. You know, some people are perfectly satisfied with their personal growth and spirituality. Yep. And they're not doing anything. They're not in classes. They might not be regular church goers, but you might feel like you have to give yourself a lower score because you're not doing anything. But really, right. if you are satisfied and you're not in action, you can give yourself an eight, a nine, or a 10 in this yep. situation right but people kind of always feel like if i'm not doing anything maybe does that mean does that mean it's not important does that mean i should be giving it a lower score not necessarily and maybe everything is going really well in that area and it's just an opportunity to give it an eight or nine and and then and some acknowledgement and appreciation for what is going great mm -hmm. right there's some power in that um as well because those are the things that you want to make sure that you don't neglect them and they're going great. 
So what mm -hmm. a way to continue the things going great by acknowledging what is going great with that. Right. So that, right. Like I would score myself right now. It's interesting, you know, a two, maybe a five with regards to my environment, only because, you know, as you know, Don, I've been working with a declutterer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I would say before then it was probably a two. Um, you know, we sold my parents' house. I got a lot of the different things from the parents' house. Some of those things still don't have homes. Some of the things in my own personal life I have to get rid of to make room for the things that are important to me. So it's really an interesting concept that I'm going through this, where maybe we just have too big of a home. Because too big of a home? Yeah, we're starting to go, wow, this is a much bigger home than we maybe need, or maybe we're just not using its function, right? So that's why we hired a declutterer and um, kind of visual spatial person to help us with this process. Mm -hmm. Because um, we all have an idea of the patterns that work for us. And then some things work and some things don't. Like for example, um, in Maria Kondo's book, I forget what she says about this, which is actually really interesting. And I'm gonna bring this up, but my husband and I are both pilers as in we have piles of work to do. So like, oh, you know, you really only wanna to touch something once or twice at most, but sometimes you just can't make a decision and it goes in the, I can't decide now pile. Right. Oh my God. And we only do that really with mail or if it work from papers or family stuff and and it it gets um it gets frustrating how many times we actually touch something so that's when you know anna our declutterer will say to us you know there's a process here that's not working the piles are the symptom right so let's go in and find a process and um that works for both of you hmm. you know you have one for the home and one for the businesses so right right mm -hmm. and I think that's a that's a really good thing to to when you start to dig down mm -hmm. you really start to dig down and sometimes we don't even know like where did it come from that I had to worry about those things there like there's some concern that when you can actually uncover it it might actually make it easier to stay in your job right? Because maybe you're getting paid well, and maybe you've got great benefits, but there's this little thing that it's just making you crazy and you've made it huge and you didn't even realize it. So for example, so I have two sisters and they are beyond neat and orderly. I mean, I don't, I, well, the Both one of sister, us. well, the one sister is automatically, she just is always, always that way. And my other sister growing up, I mean, they shared a bedroom and Amy's side was pristine and Libby's was, I mean, you couldn't even find the bed most of the time. We never knew how she found the bed. And then um, as she got older, she didn't really get much better at it. But over the last few years, she has been learning how to declutter the physical environment, right? Mm -hmm. And I, so then I go to Libby's and I go to Amy's and I'm like, and I, I should be more, I should be more organized. So then I noticed that that's a story. Like, like if I looked at my physical environment story, mm -hmm. it's because I'm comparing myself to someone else Yes. instead of, you know, this works for me. It works for me. And if they don't want to come over to my house, that's fine. And that's never the situation. And I'm not making up, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to create some story or complain, but you know, I, I am, I've got 10 million things on my list of things to do, which is very different from their lists. And so yes. sometimes I have a lot of things that are in a state of incompletion, waiting for something else, like my mail right? This mm -hmm. has to get filed. This is waiting for this piece of paper. This is waiting for this. But I notice that I want to score something lower when I compare it to someone else and how they do things instead of, because, the, and that becomes the root cause. It's not that I'm cluttered. It's in the comparison to someone else that I have the problem. So then I can say, how important is it to be organized or I can say oh no that's just me and I can move that score out a little bit further mm -hmm. because it's what's good for me not what's good for other people does that make sense exactly you know and then part of that if you take that concept multiply it by the number of people in your household 
people don't always agree what that looks like. Right. Oh, right. right. <laughs> or take it to a company, take it to whatever else it is, right? So mm-hmm. there has to be some common ground areas and there has to be some areas where you can be truly, you know, who you are and what works for you. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. So then the other thing I was thinking about with this is um, that if you, if you pull up, if you, if you think about it like a wheel, like a bicycle wheel, and those are those separations, they're kind of like spokes of a wheel. Mm-hmm. You know, you were talking about balance. So when you're, when the wheel is go when a wheel is moving, the whole thing is in balance, but there's always pressure on certain things. So mm-hmm. there's going to be pressure in the center and there's going to be pressure on whatever is hitting the ground at the moment right but not on other things and even if even if Mm -hmm. and you and I have talked about this before I just want to remind people because you had said something about balance am I far enough away so I can see from your hips above okay great so if you're if you're walking so right now I'm in balance I have two feet on the ground I'm not going anywhere right so if you think about your wheel everything's in balance it's not going anywhere but as soon as I take that lifting up my right leg and all of a sudden I'm out of balance I'm on my left foot and I'm in motion so you're it when you're truly in balance nothing is moving that means there's no forward activity there's no backwards activity you're almost like you're paralyzed you're frozen in time so people right. think so people who think they need this perfect balance it's like a fantasy in terms of physics and reality because you're always going to have something out of balance, right? Even, you know, my arm might be career and money and this might be fun and personal growth and this is my partner and this is physical. So all of them are in, even as you walk, they're all in a different space with every movement. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important for people to realize that even if you're working on one piece other pieces are now starting to shift a little bit because you can't work on any of them in a vacuum. Exactly. Right. And how you do one thing is how you do everything. So as you get to clarity and momentum in one area, they all start to move. The most important thing is in a wheel is that all the spokes move in the same direction. Right. Or if you tried to walk and you kept your arm like this the whole time, right? Instead of letting it move, right? It's mm-hmm. like, everything's great, but I'm not touching fun, right? Oh, it doesn't be so sad. It doesn't work so well though. No. Right. No. And I think that's what I'm trying to have people realize is that it's even as you're, even when you're working on one, the others are going to be adjusting as you go. Yes. So anyway, Liz, it's it almost is, 1125 already. Can you believe it? I cannot <laughs> believe it. And a lot of it is just taking those assessments every now and then just figure out where you are, right? Right. We're going to put this document into the, um, into the live chat for you. Um, but give us, a, give us a shout. Wait, are we putting it in the live chat? People can email we're us. Also gonna, yeah, we're also going to put it in our Shimula Facebook group. So it's Shimula exclamation point. That way they, there's documents in there, there's tools in there. If you want to join us, which is where we share a lot of great information, you can download this uh, Wheel of Life if you From want to there. do an assessment. Mm-hmm. That's right. And then on Wednesday, we are doing, we have a group that we work with monthly out of uh, Elevate called Financial Coffee and Chat. And this month with them, we're doing the mind mapping work. We get, we're getting a lot of requests to uh learn about mind mapping tool and or to like get re uh, acquainted with the mind mapping tool so feel free to join us um at 11 30 um following the great resignation on wednesday to talk about to work on mind mapping so bring your colored markers your pens your pencils piece of paper and we'll be doing some great stuff yeah. on mind mapping it's so great to have tools for people who are think more creatively and they're trying to get things into the boxes of the linear, right? Or people who are linear who are trying to get some vision work done for people who are the visionaries. So right. this is a really great tool, no matter if you're left brain or right brain, and how to start to bring things to life and get mm-hmm. organized. Right. 
And just to remind everybody, we still have, we have, um, we're offering a discount on our, our um, money master plan mastermind group. So that is a group where you meet monthly for four months. It's a really great community conversation. It's a very safe place to explore what's happening in your world. And this is one of the tools that we use in that group. And it's um, six modules of videos and workbooks that go with it to help you design the poss your possibility roadmap and to figure out what you need to be doing to have the great life you love. And then we have a version of that program, which is called Cracking the Code um, to, your, to Your Wealth and Cracking the Money Code to Your Wealth. And that is just an online program but we're offering it, it's $449 and for veterans, it's free. So we would love to be able to support our active uh, military and any of our veterans in having that program. That's through the end of the, this month, as long as you register by the end of the month. So, And Dawn, I think it's really important. You know, people are talking about the great resignation and making the big leap, making big changes or pivots in their life. There are tons of people who have done their time and served our country for decades, right? And they're fairly young still when they go to retire. And then what? So this program is also really powerful for people who are looking to pivot from, you know, whether it's into retirement, into the next phase, a second career, mm -hmm. uh, maybe launching a dream. So it is all about the possibility that's in front of you and creating the roadmap to get there. Right, great. Mm -hmm. And you can get access to the information about our courses at shimula.com. So we'll put all of that into the feed. But yep. thanks, Liz. And we'll see everybody again tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Have a great day.